Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F-14B Tomcat and we're looking at doing an airfield IFR landing using TACAM. So let's get straight to work. Let's look at the mission. Today we are, that's our Tomcat, we are heading in a southwest direction. The airfield we want to land at is Batumi. We can see here it has a TACAM on the left side of runway 13, channel 16 X-ray. So that's what we're going to home into. First of all, let's us uh, look at today's controls as well as our normal axis controls. We're going to have our G for gear, F for flaps, we'll need our air brake. DLC direct lift control is optional for airfield landings. Personally, I don't use it. I only suggest it for aircraft landings, aircraft carrier landings, sorry. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the flight instruments that we're going to use. We're going to be using the HUD. We're going to be using the VSI. We're going to be using the HSD in nav mode, and let me just get rid of that uh, joystick. Uh, we're going to be using our VSI. We have a VSI uh, repeater in the HUD here. It's probably the biggest instrument we're going to be looking at today. We're not going to be looking at... We are going to be looking at our speedo at the first half of this, and as soon as we're on the radial, then we're no longer going to be using the speedo. With altimeters, we are not going to be using the radar altimeter. We are going to be using the barometric altimeter, which we are going to adjust to zero to the Batumi runway. So the first thing we're going to do is tune into the TACAN station and set ourselves up to receive TACAN steering information. Now, we've got a whole video showing how to do this manually with the dials and the knobs, so we're not going to go through that. We're just going to cheat with Jester to make it quick. So just make sure I'm flying straight and level. Put my controls up. Uh, let's go to Jester. Navigation, we're going to go to, uh, which one is it, sorry, uh, Takan, ground station, Batumi, Copy. let's set ourselves up for Takan steering, Takan, uh, ACL, ACL, and landing, okay, we've got our steering information now, whoops, let's be careful not to steer, next we need to get our QFE from Batumi ATC, um, so we're going to go comms menu, I've got easy comms turned on, just to make this video easy, and quick ATC, Batumi, inbound. Batumi, Uzi, 1-1, one, one, inbound. Uzi, 1-1, one, one. Batumi, fly heading 143, 47, USD 29.89, runway 1-2-9.89 inches Mercury, go down here, let's tune this in. We've now got a barometric altimeter. Zero to the runway, uh, we've got to arrest that sink rate, that's getting a bit out of control, sorry, climb rate. Okay, we can start getting on with things now. The next thing to do is we need to get our speed under control down into uh, a speed where we can start preparing for landing. So that it's going to be about 200 knots. So air brakes out and they will remain out for the rest of the journey to enable our engines to have enough rev to be responsive enough. Next, we're gonna set up our course. So we have uh, the option with Takan steering to set up a course line. And, it's absolutely essential that we get this right. This is to allow us to get onto a landing radial or an airfield uh, radial. Let me just. Uh, um, we are currently. Oh, we've actually. So doing all that talking, I've actually overshot the radial, but that's okay. It's gonna. It's a realistic example. So we need to get onto a course that matches the runway here. So we have to be a heading in the right direction to Batumi, but also on the right angle, if you like, on the runway radial, as it's known. Now this is known as runway 13, that means it's 100, well sorry, 130 degrees, but that's not accurate enough, we need to get an accurate radial here, so we're going to measure, and you can see that we have a true heading of 125 degrees. Now bear in mind the Tomcat works on magnetic, all of its instruments are magnetic, so there is a magnetic variation of 6 degrees in this part of the world. So our actual heading that we're going to set, our course line, sorry, is going to be 119. So that'll, that'll put us on this radial and allow us to steer to that radial. So that's that, get that set. So mouse scroll wheel. Let's get 119 in there. Okay, we've now got useful steering information on the HUD, the VDI, and the HSD. This line here, or this arrow here, is our course that we want to get on. This is our course deviation line, showing that to get onto that course, we need to turn left, essentially. And you can see the same guidance there and the same guidance there. Uh, this triangle here is the heading, so the direction. So this is not to do with the radial. It's the direction straight to that TACAN station, which is just left of the runway. 
here is our current 12 o'clock, here is our 6 o'clock. So the idea is we have to get this line here, our course line, our radial line, lined up with the Takan triangle here and get both of them lined up with our 12 o'clock position here. Then we are heading towards Batumi and on the correct radial. So that's azimuth steering, but what about elevation? What about glide slope? Well, we don't have that information with TACAN navigation, unfortunately, and we don't have land-based ILS, so we're going to have to do it old school. The way we do it is we take our distance from the uh, TACAN station, from the runway here in miles, and you times it by 300 feet. So 1,500 times 300, sorry, 15 times 300 feet is 4,500. So at this distance, 15 miles, we should be at 4,500 barometric, assuming we're zero to the runway, which we are. So we're going to unpause now. I'm going to start working on our way onto the radio. And we can use the HUD, the VDI, or HSD. Uh, in reality, I'm just going to use a mixture of both because we're not in the soup yet. Uh, there's no harm in using the HUD at the moment. Unpause. Let's start working away. Our speed is now. We can start getting uh, equipped for landing. So gear down, flaps down, air brakes already out. Start turning left. Start re trimming. What we can do now uh, to take the workload off us is we what we don't want to have to worry about our manual throttle. We could do that, but in uh, IFR conditions like this, the best thing we want to do is to turn on our APC, our automatic power compensator. That is going to deal with the power to ensure that we're always on the correct landing angle of attack. So that's one less thing we have to worry about. So what I'm going to do is get that done. Uh, make sure we have throttle slightly above idle. Right click on him there. That's APC on. Now we can just use the stick and concentrate on our steering information. So, uh, we, what we can say is we've shot way right of the radial because of uh, all the talking I've been doing. We can prove that by going F10. We can see that we are way right, miles right of that radial. So we've got to do some, um, some heavy manoeuvring here and that's fine. That's what we're going to get done. Uh, we've also got to lose some altitude. Uh, we're bang on the altitude now, 4,300 at 14 miles. So let's look at this now. So we've got a nice aggressive, whoops, a nice aggressive roll into the radial on the left now. Let's try not to stall ourselves. Speed, we don't have to worry about because APC is going to sort all of that out for us. Right, so you can see we're currently not aligned at all. You can see triangles there, course lines there, 12 o'clock is there. So we've got lots of work to do, which is fine. We like work. We're going to level out our altitude for the time being. We'll be watching our VSI almost all of the time here. We've got a VSI repeater up here, but I prefer the steam gauge. So we've still got a long way to go, so we're going to uh, increase the aggressiveness back onto the radial. 12 miles, 12 times 3. I can't actually do that. 3,600? I think it's 3,600. And we're bang on altitude at the moment. Double check while we've got a minute. Gear, good. Flaps, good. Air brake, good. Still got a long way to go to get on radio. BSI, 500 uh, feet per minute is good. Check, 11 times 3 is 3,300. We're just above glide slope, so a little bit down trim. We're still well off radial. Come on, radial, we'll come back. I think we should be able to get it back. BSI is still 500 feet per minute. I think that's okay. 10 miles uh, times 3 is 3,000 feet. We are currently at 3,200. We need to add a bit more downwards. A bit more dive. So we're down to 1,000 feet per minute. Okay, the, um, uh, the radial deviation line is coming back in. So we can start turning in now. We're heading into the soup now. So we no longer get the glory of seeing the sky. This is where it gets difficult. No, we turned into the radial too soon. Back out distance 9 miles 9 times 3 is 2700 feet we are bang on 2700 feet at 750 feet per minute pretty happy with all that it's just our radio we've got to get back now and we can do this VSI 750 feet per minute that's fine slightly below glide slope, uh, glide slope. 8 miles is 2,400 feet. We are bang on 2,400 feet. Keep the VSI 500 to 750 feet per minute. Radial, we're, we're moving in now. So we can just think about starting to turn in very shortly. Distance check. 8 is times 4. It's 2,400 feet. We're slightly below guide slope now. 
Arrest sink rate back up to 500 feet per minute. Radial is looking... We're almost there. We're almost on radial. Altitude, 7 miles, uh, 2,100 feet. Exactly correct. Okay, radio almost got it now. You can see everything's starting to line up on the HSD down there. A little bit left, tiny bit left. We've almost got this. Distance, 7 miles, 2,100 feet. We're below Gleisler by 200 feet. Arrest sink rate back to 250 feet per minute. Radio's not quite there still, almost. Tiny bit of left sick. Uh, distance uh, 6, 1800 feet. Bang on 1800 feet, perfect. Okay, finally, we're on radial, perfect. Distance 6 miles, 1700 feet, we're 100 below, feet below glide slope. Arrest the sink rate, 300 feet per Clear for visual, contact tower, request landing. Uzi, one, one, request landing. We've slipped past the, uh, we've slipped past the radial, stupid cap. Concentrate, five miles, 1500 feet, perfect. We're gonna adjust right slightly, try and get back on that radial. Sink rate, 500 feet per minute, good. Four miles, four times three, 1200 feet, we are. Bang on glide, uh, bang on glide slope, bang on glide slope. We're gonna start turning back in now. Uh, four miles, 1200 feet, 1100 feet, 100 feet under glide slope. Sink rate is too high, arrest sink rate. Checks, gear, flaps, air brake. Right, I'm gonna turn towards the Takan station now. Three miles, 900 feet, bang on. Slightly below glide slip, in fact. Got it, there it is, whoops. We're ever so slightly off there. Looks like I made a slight miscalculation. No, it's just because I slipped off the radio, it's my bad. I didn't, I wasn't watching that deviation, uh, the track deviation clear enough. Silly cap. Glide slope was beautiful though. It shows how accurate we need to do this. Two miles, 400 feet, we're low, we're low, we're 300 feet low. 400 feet low, 300 feet low. 200 feet low. Landing gear check. We're gonna position our path mark vector, this guy here, on the threshold of the runway. We don't need to worry about speed as ever, or angle of attack. You'll see that, let me just pause it there, you'll see that the, uh, the uh, radial deviation line is telling us that we need to go left a bit. Well, the reason is the Takan station, remember, is not on the runway. It's that little dude there. So the Takan station is actually on the left of the runway. So there's a little compensation you need to make. By the time that makes a difference, though, um, you're going to have visual anyway, so it doesn't matter. We are uh, we're, we're, we're way low. We're 200 feet barometric. Wow, silly cat. How did that happen? Right, we need to um, just level that a little. Just a little. Just let that slip a bit, didn't I? Right, prepared to take control of the throttle. Make sure anti-skid is on. It is. Down we go. Throttle down. Brakes on. Pump brakes. You can see the, um, the course deviation lines way off to the left now because of the attack and station being on the left. Beautiful. Wasn't perfect. To be honest, we gave ourselves a really hard start there by... Uh, we were so far off the radio. We were... Shut up. We were about, I don't know, two miles uh, east of the radio. So we had to do that massive aggressive turn. Although it's a kind of good example to show how you can get it back if you are um, way off on a radial interception. Otherwise, it's, it's, that's it, really. Um, it, it, was, it was a little bit messy, but I wasn't following the radial enough. Uh, at the end, I was concentrating on 
on the uh, on the VSI too much, but we got down. Uh, we're never any in any real danger of missing the runway or coming in too far off to the side. So I think that's fine. Right, so all I've got to say. Hope that helps, and see you later.